Hey everyone, today on Garden Fork, really, really simple, really kind of a quickie garden fork, probably one of the shortest ones we've ever done. Um, I'm down in Brooklyn here today and everyone is gone. Everyone else is up in the country at the house in Connecticut. There's no dogs, there's no horses, no other people. So I'm actually doing some painting down here and I have to paint some of the doors in the apartment and as you can see, a bunch of our door hardware is all painted over and for years it's kind of bothered me. I thought I really like to get the paint off those things and I always thought I had to use some kind of a, you know, some sort of chemical paint stripper and I'm, you know, kind of leery of that because it smells a lot and it seems like you don't want to breathe in that stuff too much. And then I ran across this little how-to thing on the web about removing paint from stuff like this, like door hinges and doorknobs, almost anything metal. Um, in a really neat way. So I wanted to show you how to do that today. So the first trick is we got to get this thing off the door and the screws are painted shut or painted so you can almost can't see the screws basically. Um, I'm going to take the doorknob off. You can see here I, I tried to pull some of the paint off already and it wasn't very successful. Um, and someone painted this house, this apartment red <laughs> at one point. We, you know we painted it white um, but there's like layers of red paint here so I thought that was kind of weird. Anyway, um, just a quick little thing I wanted to show everyone and I thought, you know, I should just make a little garden fork video about it because, you know, I kind of stumbled upon this on the web and maybe you guys would like to learn about it, all right? So here we go. Step one, take this off. Somewhere under here is a screw. So you just want to carefully poke around. I can kind of see the slot. There we go. Okay, now try and find the top one. More of that red paint. Ooh, this one's gonna be easier, I hope. There's a lot of paint. There. Doorknobs usually have one or two screws. They're kind of, they're usually at a right angle to each other that are holding the knob itself onto the, the doorknob assembly shaft. It's usually a square shaft that has little threads on it, and then these go on. So this one isn't too painted over and it looks like there's only one screw so I'm just gonna take that screw out and then we're gonna take this guy off. Well, in a perfect world we're gonna take it off, so. Um, ooh, I need new glasses. This is when you know you're over 40, you have to have the, the glasses for when things are close. So that's, that's my life, that's the story of my life right now. Uh, me being the master of the obvious here, you, you want to make sure that when you take this doorknob off that you haven't locked this door and that you can actually get back out. And I know that's obvious, but you know, maybe it isn't. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so the trick now is we need to separate the plate from the wall and it's clearly it's been painted in. So I'm just going to take my screwdriver and try and just try and score a line somewhere without scratching up the um, hardware plate, the door plate, doorknob plate, is that what it's called? I don't know. There we go, there we go. So that, wow. Oh, and look at that. Look at all the old colors. That's wild. Okay, so we're now in the kitchen and I'm going to reveal the secret method, big secret, um, for getting the paint off your doorknobs and door plates and hinges and stuff like that. It's a crock pot. Believe it or not, this thing, besides cooking pot roasts or stews or chili or whatever it is people making these things, and I guess I got to start doing crock pot episodes soon, um, this will basically soak the paint off of hardware, door hardware and hinges and stuff like that. It's really simple. I'll show you how. Crock pot, some soap. You take your hardware, fill it up with water. When it goes on, set this on low and just let it go. I know I kind of like this cow. It's got a little map of the United States on here and of course New York is big and the rest of the states aren't.
Okay, it's been about five, five, six hours this thing has been bubbling away here. Um, don't crank it up to high. I put it on warm or low and it did pretty good. Um, I think sometimes it'll take overnight. If you're gonna do it for overnight, I suggest you take it, put it out in the garage or somewhere. Um, I don't know, it just seems like a better idea out there. But let's see what this does. Put on some nice gloves because, you know, your hands are gonna get full of junk. Don't wear any clothes that you think might be valuable or you might want to use at a cocktail party or something. And let's see what happens here. Okay, moment of truth here. Oh, wow. Oh, look at this. Is that cool or what? Look at that. That's amazing. Look at that. It just comes right off. And this is great because there's no there's no chemicals. It's soap and hot water and a crock pot. So we went from this to this, and we didn't use any chemicals. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, rubber gloves. Just just I'm at a loss for words here. Um, just use some rubber gloves. Get a, get a used crock pot, go to a tag sale. Maybe there's one in the basement already you haven't used in a bunch of years. I remember crock pots from the 70s. It was kind of a big deal and now they have a big resurgence. So, um, But try and find one that's an old one because you're gonna get all gunked up. And you can go from this to this, which I think is really cool. All right, that's a quickie Garden Fork episode for you. Tell your friends about the show. Send us emails, tell, you what, tell us what you think. I can't talk today. Um, and thanks for watching, all right? Make it a good day. I'll see you later.